Welcome to the fourth of five Creative Economy Seminars. We're thrilled that you can be with us, and we're thrilled to have joining us by teleconference, and you can't see the sites. You don't, I think. Oh, now you can. We have uh, conference sites in Guelph, Ottawa, Toronto, Timmins, Muskoko, and other areas. I know that uh, we have representatives from... Uh, the Martin Prosperity Institute, OMAFRA, the University of Guelph, the Rural Secretariat, Muskoka Community Network, and other organizations. We are very pleased that you could join us. And the best news for you all is that it snowed here today. <laughs> <laughs> you knew something that we didn't know. <laughs> OK, and I'd like to thank the video conferencing team who do a superb job and make this possible. Before introducing our speakers today, I just would like to mention that we do have some handouts at the front and business cards, and we also will make soft copies of the handouts available on the Monison Center's website. And uh, those of you who are at a distance should have received soft copies of these materials. If not, just email us after and we'll be sure to provide them to you. And the videotape of this session will be also posted on the site. But with no further ado, I'd like to officially open today's seminar. It's a great delight. I'll give you a little bit of the background. I approached Anne-Marie Keller, Economic Development Consultant, OMAFRA, and asked her to speak about policy issues with respect to the rural creative economy. Anyone who knows Anne-Marie knows that she excels. So instead of delivering one presentation, she strong-armed four of her colleagues, <laughs> and today we have a panel of five. So I'll just let you know who you're about to hear from. In addition to Anne-Marie, we'll be hearing from uh, Carla, Juliana, Rural Policy Development, and uh, of a MAFRA, of course, Galen Kennedy, Senior Policy Advisor, Ministry of Research and Innovation, Alida Stevenson, Policy Advisor, Ministry of Tourism and Culture, and Adriano Mina, also a Strategic Policy and Programs in this case with MEDT, the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade. I believe that Anne-Marie, you will be our first presenter. Please join me in welcoming our guests. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introductions. Um, I'm actually just going to introduce the session. My name is Anne-Marie Kelleher. I'm out of the Belleville uh, office, and I work with OMAFRA as an economic development consultant. And we've been asked to talk today about rural policy implications for the creative economy. The creative economy has certainly become an important component of rural economic development as it focuses on quality of place and assets, which is a key factor for rural communities right now, especially in that it serves to differentiate them from each other, and it also helps to diversify the local economy. As individual ministries, we have all developed policy and programming to assist communities and businesses in developing this sector. Today, we want to take you through the evolution of these programs and demonstrate how rural communities can get involved to further this sector and to adopt successful strategies. So we've invited several of our fellow ministries here that uh, actually have different programs and policies, and they're going to take you through those. So to begin with, I'd like to start with Adriano. Morning, everyone, and uh, everyone out in the field. Uh, please excuse if I'm a little uh, wet behind the ears. This is my first uh, public speaking engagement. So, uh, uh, ba but basically, my uh, role with the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade is uh, a policy one, uh, where we're behind the scenes and uh, we receive a lot of uh, research from uh, various uh, stakeholders, but also um, uh, we fund research. Uh, um, on various uh, economic issues, and uh, we reviewed that ish those uh, that research, and then uh, try as much as possible uh, where relevant to input it into a policy development. Uh, and so that's what I'm here to talk about today, and uh, and why we've gotten into uh, the creative economy, specifically uh, our ministry. And uh, basically, there's uh, been many drivers that have affected uh, the shift uh, to the creative economy. We've seen a great decline in uh, manufacturing, and uh, also looking forward, we know that there's going to be some labor market challenges in the future, uh, specifically that uh, because of uh, changing demographics, we're a much older workforce uh, now, and we'll not have the manpower, uh, even with uh, 
targeted immigration to bring people in. So we have to uh, do something or look for ways to um, alleviate that stress uh, going forward. Um, we also require, uh, or due to these uh, factors, we require new ways to look at economic development, uh, specifically the role of innovation, the role of culture, uh, how place-based and asset-based economic development can help communities. Uh, so basically we're looking for a holistic, integrated, and multifaceted uh, venture moving forward. Uh, when Richard Florida has uh, stated that um, places with higher levels of human capital, so meaning uh, either intelligence or increasing productivities in certain ways, um, are more innovative and uh, they grow more uh, rapidly. So focus on the creative economy may help uh, bolster local communities. And also communities are more willing to look at ways specifically in the creative economy uh, to bolster their economies simply because you don't need the um, infrastructure development that uh, the heavy infrastructure uh, development that, uh, for example, manufacturing requires. You have to clear all the land, you have to bring in the equipment, etc. With the, the creative economy, it's you're thinking, you're going, you're moving forward. Uh, and as well as there's a potential role for uh, many factors in here. It's not just the government, it's not just the private sector, it's all levels of government, everyone working together. So there's a lot of collaboration going on with the creative economy. And so there's many ways for all those different uh, parties to uh, help one community move forward. So uh, what the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade did uh, through the uh, March 2008 budget was to uh, commission the Ontario and the Creative Age uh, project through the Martin Prosperity Institute. The purpose of the study was to undertake uh, a study of uh, ch the changing composition of Ontario's economy and workforce and to examine historical uh, changes and projected uh, future trends affecting Ontario and to provide recommendations to the province on how to ensure Ontario's economy and people remain globally competitive and prosperous. Uh, so basically this was uh, to ideally form uh, some form of a backbone on which uh, the province could develop an economic framework uh, moving forward. I'll get into the uh, lessons in just a second. Uh, basically, uh, they define the creative economy as an economy that requires analytical skills and judgment based primarily in the service industries, uh, providing services and relying on creativity. Now, given this is an economic, or, sorry, an academic institution, I, I suppose that there will be lots of discussion on that specific uh, definition, but we can get on to that during the question period, if need be. Now, the paper uh, was released on February 5th uh, and followed by 20 supporting working papers, and they had four overall recommendations, and they were categorized as uh, the province and other stakeholders. I need to harness the creative potential of all Ontarians, uh, broaden the talent base, establish a new safe, social safety net, and build a province-wide geographic advantage. With respect to uh, harnessing the creative potential of Ontarians, um, the province, as well as businesses, should increase creativity in all jobs, be the world's first jurisdiction where creativity-oriented occupations account for half of all jobs, strengthen creativity skills through our education system, market Ontario as a creative province, and make diversity a cornerstone of economic prosperity. Uh, so basically, uh, what this is trying to say is that we really need to be thinking a lot more of everything we do. Uh, if there is some little way that we can increase productivity in one little factor, we have to be thinking about that. We have to reduce the amount of repetitive um, uh, jobs in, in our economy and make sure that even though a job may be repetitive, you have to bring people who can think and find efficiencies within those jobs. Second is to uh, broaden the talent base. Um, so this can be achieved by making Ontario the talent province and strengthening Ontario's managerial cap capability. Uh, through other supporting documents, uh, both Martin Prosperity Institute and the Institute for Competitiveness and Prosperity has noted that uh, Ontario, when compared to our uh, 15 other U.S. peer jurisdictions, we are woefully behind in uh, training for management positions. So uh, students uh, who gra 